day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of you. And if Christ be in you, get this now. If Christ be in you, and this whole thing now, rise upon Paul teaching about if any man be in Christ. Mm -hmm. That you are in Christ for the purpose now of Christ imbuing and filling and saturating you because truth of the matter is when you are out there on the street dealing with people yeah the love of god has to be communicated through you come on come on the, the love, love of god has to be listen you don't understand that you're the you're the instrument on the street yes now now he is at work on the other end Come on. But he's out. using you to speak his word. It's your mouth that he's using. Woo. It's your emotion and the compassion. He's feeling you so that you are being brought into a connection of wonder with him. And what they're going to sit now, not you, they're going to sit Christ in you. Come on. And they're going to sit his love. Hmm. And, and see, that's what makes the gospel work. Because see, when they're talking to you, hmm. if you're being controlled by the spirit of love and you're being motivated by love, Ooh, God, if they're ready, like a tomato, now if they're green, you can you can forget it. They ain't ready for it. Right. But if they're playing for conviction, come go, the Spirit of God is going to enable them to sift the love that is flowing from you. Yes. That's going to touch their heart. Come on. You may not never know it, they may not respond to it, but that, that's going to touch their heart. Come on. So we're the instruments. And in the process of doing that, we are changed. Come on. We are dealt with. Now, he said, but if, but the first says, but if the spirit of him that raised uh, him from the dead, that's the rest of heaven. But if the spirit of, of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Yes. Now, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh for if you live after the flesh ye shall die yes but if through the fear you do mortify the deeds of the body listen carefully now he didn't say mortify the deeds of sin in you he said mortify the deeds of the body come on here's what i'm trying to get you to understand when you get saved when you embrace christ when you've been born of god and become a new creature God, as far as God is concerned, you are taken out of the flesh and you're put into the spirit. Come on, sir. Yes, sir. You follow that? Okay. You're taken. So you're still living in your body. You are no longer one with your body. Come on. Come on. That's why I said brothers See, Christ. Before you get saved, there's a oneness that exists in your whole being. <laughs> Spirit, soul, and body is in a relationship of oneness when you're unsaved. Mm. Mm. Come on now. Now, sin permeates that whole thing. That whole thing is colored by sin. Woo, but now you gotta be careful so that you understand when you say sin, what exactly do you mean? Exactly. What do you exactly mean? And I think for, for a long time what we have we have done is focus on the on the fruit of sin, the consequences of sin, Amen. Ooh, our manifestation of sin, without really knowing what the sin in itself. Ooh. Okay, now, now that, and, and so I can say the result of you get hit in the head is you bleed. Bleeding is not the the, the the source of it, of it, but it's the result. So when he tells us these behaviors, and we went over those, when he talked about those behaviors, they are a result of us being separated from God, right? But if I am witnessing to somebody who has never been in, how am I supposed to? If you're not convicted by that, what explanation do I have for you? You're that's, 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 that's your responsibility. 
Oh, you just you give the word, and the word is 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 what's going to change that person, not not us. So then we no way. So we teach the the scripture that says drunkards, revelers, and I mean after that, several of us are. We party, we drink, we committed fornication, we did that, we did all of those. Yeah. At some point, something told us that's a sin. Well, it wasn't because somebody didn't. I mean, it was because it was probably preached first off. I, 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 and then we made the connection between what we were feeling as an option and what was told us, you know, uh, cognitively so. But if there is no connection, if there is no preaching of the gospel, no quote, unquote, the gospel Go if we do not identify sin, what's the need for repentance? I don't know. I and mean, I remember Trump said that. Trump ain't never done anything. Then you better start to to like ask for forgiveness for it or repent. If he doesn't see any his actions as being sinful, why did he? What, what do you mean? Okay, so then you gotta look. Is he demonstrating the fruits of the spirit? Do we gotta look? Is that our responsibility? Well, you, you're you're That's you're you you're using him as a as a example. And my thing is, if he is not showing the fruits of the spirit, then I don't believe he's saved. You know, and and you still have one one commission. And that is to share the gospel. Now, you share it. the gospel and they receive. No different than, 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 than myself, okay? I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And, and at one time, I was still out. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Fornicating. Yeah. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. And, <laughs> and over time. Over time. The spirit started dealing with me because I started getting the word, and I and and so it was the spirit dealing with me. Yes. And I even remember, you guys know Bean. I remember asking him. I was like, "Man, at what point do you get past this desire?" And the answer he gave me, I don't even want to tell you because it, <laughs> it didn't it didn't help me at all. Uh huh. <laughs> but uh, but the thing is, I kept renewing my mind, and that is what got me past that. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is dealing right. with my soul, Come on. and my spirit is 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 connected. Oh, okay, let me, let, me, let me finish this thing. I was all done. I got out of the way. I just want to say this. Because I think this is something that plagues the body of Christ. It is the reason why there's so little evidence of the life of God in the church. And by doing this pandemic, and I really talk to the about it. Racial stuff, that the church has no power. Yeah, they have yeah. witness because the fact of the matter is we're confused about what Christ has actually done for us. Come on, here's what I'm going to say to Brother Jackson. Listen. I am not acknowledging that sin dwells in me as a new Christian Christ. That is impossible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now there is sin still raging in my body. This is what this text is trying to get you to understand. It dwells in it. But if you, verse number 13, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Amen. And the temptation is always going to be possible for you. Temptation is not sin. Yes. Amen. You, you. I, I gave the example. You're on a bus, a packed bus, standing up. Come on now. There's a fine woman standing next to you. Come on. And the bus hit a bump. The seat falls up and rubs her breast on your arm. Uh huh. Cut your arm off. Your body <laughs> goes. Your body goes. <laughs> you cut your arm off. Your, your, <laughs> your body goes. Respond to that. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 But, but 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 your body brings to your mind. You don't have to embrace and deal with it. You have the option now to mortify that thing and put that to death. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if your know. history has been in your reprogramming, I am crucified with Christ. The old lead no longer live, but I'm a new creature in Christ, and that I deny ungodly and worldly lust. Then that thing can find no expression. Sin can find no conception. What can conceive? Sin won't happen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. So I, you, we've got to become now Christ conscious, 
become conscious of the new life that we have in Christ, because that's where we are. And not be deceived into thinking that because we're still in the body, which is still raising but lust and impulses and worldly lust and passion, that that's who you are. That's your body. And God left you in that body so that you can prove to him that you love him by denying yourself. Come on. Amen. See, that self-denial is, is your making the payments that you sign up to make when you embrace Christ to say that I will live a crucified life. It's your when reasonable you service. Christ, you said I'm crucified with him. Mm -hmm. But when the temptation comes, God said, now you got to make your payment. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now you gotta make your payment. You said you were dead. Make the payment now. Make the payment. Yes. And Present your body as, as living sacrifices. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's Holy and acceptable under God. God. Amen. But if the enemy can get you to get you to believe that what's raising in your body is you, then you will never experience what, what, what Romans says. That life was sin does not have dominion over you. Mm -hmm. You follow me? I do. So I'm, I'm walking around and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, look, uh, if you believe that God really has taken up residence inside of you, then every time sin occurs, it is a willful act. It is a conscious act. Now, I don't know any, any one of you brothers who are willfully, constantly going out there doing stuff. You know y'all got the business doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen periodically, but that thing doesn't color your life. Your Come life is not characterized by that at home. Come on now. So in order to get the, not to get the enemy room in our lives to plague us, we've got to understand what we've got in Christ and know that that is guaranteed that's a guaranteed path to victory. If we can first get this thing in our hearts and minds and believe what God has said, that is going to become the way of deliverance. And I and, and I believe that He is He has taken me up into Himself. One John says that God is light, and there is no darkness in Him at all. If we walk in darkness and say we have fellowship with Him, we lie. Come on now, hey Bishop. And uh, Elder will go for us. Speak to Elder's issue because he's trying to connect. I got to go. Now, okay, bro. I got to go. Are you going to do communion? Right, right. No, no, I got I'm going to be late as it okay. is. Go ahead. All right. All right, all bro. Right, brother. Nice right. talking to you, bro. Roger right, that. I appreciate, I appreciate that, all y'all. All right, brother. Hey, Bishop, speak to Elder about this connection of speaking or ministering to, to homosexuals. And, and before you, I, I want to ask him to that. That's the same problem we have with racism. There's people have a hardened heart toward, you know, Brother Addison, with racism, right? That their heart is hard to connect the gospel and contend with racism. But Elder has a problem trying to connect with ministering to somebody that's a homosexual. Isn't that what you're trying to say? Yeah, Elder Johnson is trying to say, how can I connect to him? I have a problem connecting. Yeah, I mean, to, to honestly speaking, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the, the one thing that bothers me, and I want to believe, uh, hopefully I can capitalize, capitalize it in this. There's a scripture that says, he would that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You have two people who are engaged in what they perceive to be a viable relationship. What's the need for repentance? That's, that's one thing, right? And so, so how am I going to preach? Even though we're looking at it and saying, they go, that's not the will of God. Why not? You know, that's racism. Why not? You know, that's sexism. Why not? There, there, there's, there's, there's a connection between death and these practices that are not always easily drawn. Or well, I can say they aren't easily drawn, but they don't actually jump out at you. you know, like, even you skip fornication, why not? Uh, adultery, why not? It's, it's, and, 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 I, and I put this out, Lord help me with this, because we do a lot of time handle concepts that we don't have real, you know, it's difficult to explain to other people what they actually mean. I understand that sin separates you from God, and that is death. But how that behavior is depicting sin in a life of a person that's not that, doesn't have the understanding of 
of, of, of sin, then how do we help them? You know, why, how do I go to a person and say, you know, you have a loving relationship where you know that's sin and you're going to die and go to hell? How do you do that? But how do you do that? Why would you? How do you do that with the fornicator? I'm trying to, I'm trying to separate that. How do you do that with the fornicator? For some reason, it doesn't seem to have that much of a problem with the fornicator. What? Why? Uh, it, it, there's no movement. There's no movement on their part to be accepted. They what just do, do it, and they don't really, uh, they don't really uh, make a, a issue of it one way or another. What you mean? Uh, because they don't you, want you nobody know, to know. Said, and I know you, you had said that, uh, that. Uh, you know, to, to to treat somebody ill because of a sin, or to discriminate them because of a, against them because of a sin, isn't right. So I, we and we do that and have done that with the homosexuals because they were they become a protective community anyway. Because people quote unquote treated them so you know so badly. Right, discrimination and abuse. Is yeah, they, they, they discriminate against them for jobs and so on and so on. The reality of it is. <clears throat> a lot of people did that anyway with fornicators and adulterers and the rest of it. All people always pass judgment concerning people's behavior when in the hiring practices. They just don't let you know it. But uh, this one, they felt targeted, so they said, "This is happening to us because we're gay." Okay. Um, okay, so now we put protections up around them, and we move forward with that, and, and they. And they develop a lobby and they do this and they do this and they're gaining more and more momentum as far as the lobby is concerned or protected group is concerned. What is telling them when we come to them from the kingdom perspective, that's not right. How do you do that with the fornicator? Well, what, what, what does that have to do with, with the gospel? Let me ask you a question. Maybe you can solve a lot of problems if you answer this question. Are you talking about preaching can't the hear gospel you. in the church setting? Really? You can't hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Mm -hmm. Are you mm -hmm. talking about preaching the gospel in a, in a church setting? Or are you talking about preaching the gospel? Or are you talking about talking to somebody one on one? Which one of these scenarios are you talking about? It, it definitely be one on one. It, 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 whatever setting was, it's going to be. It's going, to, it's going to be, um, oh, I see what you're saying, whether we're just preaching the gospel as a, you know, sore, or we actually dealing with that first position. Yeah, it'll be more and more, uh, I think it'll be more, probably kind of one-on-one. -on -one. This is this is somebody that, a one-on-one -on -one setting, yeah. Because in a, in a, in a, in a, in a precinct setting, <clears throat> you, you, God has given you something to say, and you don't really know who you're talking to. Legit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, no, cause see, see the beauty, and then this is this has helped me a whole lot. When I come to a place in a preaching setting, I don't know who's dealing with what in there. Come on, I have people I've never seen before. Right. So or so in the word. All I know is God has given me a message, and in the pulpit He has the freedom to to use me to speak that message, and because God knows who's in there, you will find people who are in a certain situation, then the Spirit of God will be dealing with that person about that thing, and you don't even know it. You don't even know it's about preaching it. the gospel. And I think it works more effective that way anyway. Too. But now, when you're on a one-on-one -on -one setting, that's a whole different world. Yeah. It's a whole different world. When you run into somebody on the bus or on the street, and they're gay, and they ask you a question, you get into dialogue, now you got to deal with, now you got to be able to make a connection with that person and help them to understand that what they're doing is out of line with God. I, I got that problem right now with a guy that is, I think, is what I call a mild racist. Yeah. And what I've got to do, what I've been doing, is that I, I need to understand the subtle nuances of racism, because I've experienced racism, but I didn't, I wasn't armed with the knowledge of, of how the system of racism actually works. Come on. And if he's going to become convicted, then it's <laughs> I got you me to put my show him the look. Do you do you do this? Do you do you have this idea? Do you embrace this ideology? You 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 do this in in, in, in practice? See, it is just, and all of us can do that because if you got sin in you, and we do, and we're fighting it, that concept of how sin works, it works the same in everybody. Come on. Come on. That, that, 
the area of manifestation are different, but the but the construct is always the same. It is lust that stems from a selfish person. Come on. Only selfish person. If you find a selfless person, you will not find sin. Woo. That is why God is asking you to die. That's why that selfish you gotta die. Yes. And I, and I think and that it's love, kingdom. if that love has to be directed primarily, I mean initially toward God, because the person who is in the, in that state can say, "I love my mate," and they and they do say that, "I love my mate just as much as anybody else." Why can't I be with him? And 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 so it's it's a quote unquote in the, uh, a selfless act, but it's an act that's supposedly against the will of God. And I guess here's 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 the question is. I'm, I'm talking to people that I want to be able to make a connection between sin and death. Well, I'm helping you with you something. Know, so you, because yeah. Christ died well, that we be reconciled, right? That, that we be delivered from the power of sin because the wages of sin is death. So he actually came to, to, to bless us in a manner but that give us life and that more abundant. So we're not preaching to people about something that we think we just want to stop them from having fun. That's not God. But we're, it's difficult for us to make the connection as to how this is actually leading you to a degraded experience in life. Well, and we, we, it's difficult to do that. Well, no, it's not difficult for you to do that. It, it, it's not like you do understand that you can't do that. What you're doing is that you're going to put the pieces of truth on the table in such a way that the spirit can do that. Because yeah. you got to put truth in front of them. You can't put theories, you can't put anything other than truth. You can't it, put it self. Truth that will make people self. free. <laughs> truth, not not opinion. Truth. Jesus said, "If you continue my word, you'll be my disciples indeed. You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Make yes, you free. It'll make you free." But my point, I guess, is saying is, I, I'm trying to figure out how he ministered to the 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 the, the uh, adulterer and the fornicator and 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 how about these other ones too. When you, hey, well, how do you minister to them? The I, I, that's what I'm trying to figure out. How, how do you separate that this particular is problem? Thing <laughs> the, way, the way I it's separate the problem. Uh -huh. It's the same problem. It's the same problem. It is. It is. <laughs> but it's, it's, not, what Johnson, I think, is trying to say is, is that the fornicator <laughs> doesn't have a, a supporting platform. He doesn't have a system. You see, once you get laws in place, once you have legal uh, backing, then everything changes. I think that's what he's trying to get at. The yeah, it, it, have because it. if we look at racism, racism expresses itself eventually. Well, I can't even say it, say it but it's formed from, uh, from 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 people being able to degradate other folks to animals. Right. You know what I'm saying? There, there, was, there was a system that was put in place, the laws and, and ideologies that literally supported the formation and the sustaining of, of slavery. Yeah. Y'all ain't even human. Y'all savages. Y'all no more than cattle. Right. And, and, and that system was put in place to justify that sin. Right. And that was a sin. Uh, so we're seeing other systems, you know, being put in place that will do this, have done similarly so. Uh, we look at Sodom and Gomorrah, and we think about what Lot and the angels' eventual experience was with that. What system was put in place to even allow a whole town full of men to come to a place where they were accosting this guy and his guests to the point where they were gonna pull him out of ring. So there seems to be something different about that particular malady among mankind. That it is not just a benign kind of a thing that folk fall into, but it appears to be some kind of aggressive malignant, um, um, I guess manifestation that it eventually starts out as um, like cancer, that starts out crying out for help, and then eventually overwhelms the organ and destroys it. And I'm not saying it just for that case, but I'm saying people that are caught up in it, who's going to think about it that deeply, you know? But for people who are initially caught up in it, I know that conviction has to come from the Lord. But why am I really addressing this in the first place? Why do we address this? What's the problem? Okay, so you say with adultery and fornication, 
You can pretty much, um, you can draw a line there because the is to going to result in then unwanted pregnancies, STD. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, break uh, breakdown of marriages, adultery, uh, fornication, unwanted children. You know, um, abortions, uh, breakdown in, in family structure, and then we've seen these things happen. So. Even in, in the biblical sense, when they had multiple children from multiple wives, there was conflict that has continued even up until the present day as a result of those relationships. So we normally can draw, you know, say, why should you stop drinking? Well, I can tell you why you stop drinking. It'll kill you. <laughs> and I give you the different kind of ways that it killed me. And it, it, so there was nothing, I've not found any positive results from fornication, I mean from committing sin. Sin has never resulted in anything for me other than death of something. But you, and, hear, uh, you, hear, you hear that situation where uh, Benjamin was nearly wiped out because of fornication, right? Yeah. I mean, that that was a way they, they may have cut the woman up <clears throat> after they had their way with her all that night. So that yeah. was a destruction I mean, almost a whole tribe. So we see there is God is not a, 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 a you know some mystical being. He literally does not want us to engage in sin because sin, sin literally kills us. But I think I think the fact is that to me, it's saying that the first start of life it is introducing the body of Christ is is introducing Christ to a person, not the adults. I don't I don't know how effective any ministry is going to be to just come out and just start talking about you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. It should be. What you need to do is know about Jesus. And it's Jesus the one that's going to change somebody. I don't know. I'm just saying this. I know how, just like Brother Addison was talking about, how he used to minister to people. If you just come right out of the blue and start zeroing in on the, missing the mark, I, I don't know how effective you're going to be ministry anyway. Well, I remember when I first started, I would go to somebody, especially, you know, you get started, start and you're on fire. Are oh, you saying? Okay. And then the question becomes eventually I ask myself, say from what? <laughs> say oh, you, from you, what for what? You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, okay, like, let's stop. Let's stop. You can take it back the scripture, say from the, the fires of hell, you say from that, the judgment, the wrath of God. But at that point, I didn't know all that. I was just asking people they were saved. I thought God was gonna, you know, God gonna get them if they ain't saved. Okay. How are they supposed to understand that? You know what I'm saying? It, 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 got, it wasn't as effective as it should be now. You know exactly. I'm and I'm trying to sit there and say, I don't think it will be effective sitting there. Like, hey, brother, I said, hey, you, if you find a guy's a, a, a fornicator, because he says he's he living with a woman. That's a, that's where you know he's a fornicator, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I live with this woman there in the street. So my point is, what do you do when, you, when that happens? What are you going to tell that person? Well, the result of it is that He's defiling the woman. First uh -huh. off, he's defiling her. <clears throat> he stands a chance of again anything outside of the. Oh, isn't she defiling him as well? Yes, yeah. <laughs> they're living a defiled lifestyle. So if they they are actually, if they are living in sin, sin has separated them from God, and they really can't have the relationship that they really want with Him, in order to quote unquote experience the prosperity, which actually is the relationship that most of us seek. So in order to be one with God, which we talk about a lot, in order to have that relationship with God, you have to remove yourself from this. Because the, the, the down range of it is that God has made provision for you to be together. It's called holy matrimony. That's blessed of him. And if you bring it together in that guy, then he can pour out himself to ensure your success or your 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 pleasure in this life or enjoying this relationship. I thought Christ come to I thought Christ come to people as they are. It, but remember the scripture, and I remember you saying it the other day. I thought uh, I thought the changes occurs. Remember you said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Right. By the but renewing of your mind. Isn't that a process? It's uh, also, remember, it said that he would have denounced your parents, but that all should come to repentance. And what John preached initially was repentance, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And, and I don't know if that state of mankind is changing. Like, can you receive the kingdom without repenting? And in accordance with the scripture that we read earlier, we can. What did Romans 10, 9 and 10 say? The, the one that we just, the, the one scripture that we read that talked about the feminists. The, the no, 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 no. Right. But I'm talking about, I'm talking about salvation. What, 
what do you how do how do you minister salvation to somebody? What do you say? Like I used to. Well, I'll be honest with you. Uh -huh. Because when I tell somebody that you must believe in your heart, and you, you must what is it? Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ has died for your sins and He resurrected from the grave, so forth and so on. I'm right. asking somebody to make a confession on the spot. I think they probably never even considered. So so you know, so. People are saying so. It's like. That has I, that has left my repertoire. I mean, honestly speaking, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I left the repertoire. <laughs>